I would love to kick this week off, guys, with a little discussion around something that um, I think we all enjoy to some degree. Probably Brian and I a little bit more than, than Taylor. Um, but uh, <laughs> VR. Okay. Do you have a favorite feature to use in here? Yeah. Something that it's... you think is very cool? Check this out. Wow. So that's pretty neat. This is so freaking cool. Wait, hold on. Does Mark Zuckerberg have a gigantic boots? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so this is, this is actually pretty neat. Um, VR training leads to better nursing performance than clinical practice, study says. Huh. Okay. Yeah, first of all, I just want to show you the, the, the photo that came with this article, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> and I was just like picturing Kira being like on the front of the news. This is the photo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a couple nurses <laughs> banging out some VR in, uh, in with some I mean, Oculus Rift. Honestly, so like fun. the the based on the headline, it just really doesn't I think surprise called me. Meta, um, Meta Cole VR system Meta Quest, Meta yeah. Quest, yeah, Meta Coles. Yeah, that's a good eye name. I mean, there's yeah. no it's, it's no secret that anybody wearing a VR headset looks silly. Like you just you know what, it's just a true. funny. I've actually figured out why they look silly. It's not because they have this giant thing on their face. It's because when it rests on your face, it mushes down your cheeks down towards your lips. And it like mushes the lips and the cheeks in this funny way. Like diving goggles. Yes. Yeah. But but honestly, that's uh, that's changing. Big screen VR launched a customized headset that has it's made for the individual. So it's like each uh, insert is 3D printed for your face. You send them. Uh, you use like your iPhone and do uh, like measurements when you're sending in for the device, but it's also super small. Yeah, and, uh, and then they and sell. They, look cool. they, they sell all the dimensions to China. <laughs> and they they look like um, like Ready Player One. Um, well, that's Sweet. cool. Uh, what's even cooler is that new research suggests that virtual reality could enhance the training of future nurses, offering practical experience beyond the walls of inpatient clinics. The study conducted by Bethany. Sislowski, uh, an associate professor of nursing at Virginia-based George Mason University, and her team of researchers found that nursing students who engaged with immersive VR training that simulates common nursing environments were found to perform better overall than students who exclusively received clinical practice. Better than clinical practice. Now, that well, is... Well, okay, so I, I I guess it makes sense, especially I, in the in the if you are early in training, like you're if you're like a nurse in training and you're doing your like the first how maybe you're doing a practicum, like where you're doing uh, like a rotation, like like how med students in their third year go into the hospital and they start doing like rounds in every department, like trying out every department of medicine. Um, so I could see how the pressure of that. Of being like, holy shit! I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm in the, I'm here. Yeah. I got to do it, and that especially those in those like first, I don't know, that first year or more of clinical practice yeah. is probably a lot of pressure. And so maybe without the pressure and being able to do it mm-hmm. vir- virtually allows you to, uh, you know, there definitely is at least a little bit of of real world feeling mm-hmm. to VR stuff that allows you yeah. to maybe enter. Into I, have the, the I have the perfect example here. Um, when I, uh, when I, when, uh, when, when I was single and I would have make fucky time with someone brand new, sometimes the pressure would make it hard for me to stand at attention. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Boner. Get a, get a rack. Get a boner. Yeah. Get a boner. Uh, but with VR porn, it, it's, it's a really good, it, example. it, it relieves yeah. the real world pressures and I can I can stand at attention. Get I thought a boner. I thought that you were gonna give us like a something about Mary type story there, where like you were like I jerk off every time, like before every date, and then <laughs> no, no. you know, then you then you, you you know you get you have you have hair gel behind your ear that your date right. is like right. oh I needed some gel. Uh, yeah. no, um, I I also wanted to say but that is a good point. Like the the real world pressure being like lifted by. Being put in this virtual space where you you kind of feel like oh, fuck it I don't know it's a video game like if I fuck <laughs> up I get I get nine lives you know? totally. and that and your analogy is actually really good Jared but mm-hmm. the other thing that's interesting is is um, to think about and I, I mean this is maybe a, a call out to nurses who want a nurse who might want to come and talk about this on the podcast but 
bullying in nursing is like is a major problem. Dude, I mean, Kira said a thousand times, but like one thing that she heard as she was getting into nursing was like, like nurses eat their young. Eat their young. You that's know? like it's a like, that's, that's dude. That's, that's a that's the saying. That's a saying. Yeah, it's like these fresh these fresh nurses come in. You know, one of the things one of the things that was said to Kira once. I, I, I'm sh- I'm sure it's fine that I can say this on her behalf, but like she went into a job once. Hey, you know, Kira's like a petite young woman when she started nursing. It was like years ago now. She's always been a really small person. And she comes in and like older nurse who had been there for a while looks like looks her up and down and goes, that figure ain't gonna last. <laughs> In no time you'll be like me. And Kira was just like, What the fuck? Like you're my coworker, dude. Oh what the fuck God. is this? That's so crazy. First of all, like don't ever just don't don't general. ever make a comment about me and my body and like what the whatever the fuck that was. But also like, what the fuck are you doing? Like yeah. I mean, when I think of nursing, it, it's crazy how it's crazy that when I think of nursing, I simultaneously think of the sweetest person in the world and the most jaded person in the world. Mm-hmm. I don't think like, there's anything like, in between. Like, I think they're either awesome or they're really <laughs> shitty. I think I mean and cranky. I mean and fucking over it. My opinion, which hey, I get. I my, understand. It's my, a lot of, it's a it's a crazy job. My yeah. opinion is that the you know just the work environment in general is real it's fucking intense yeah. and like you know shift work is hard on oh my god anybody and and when you like get all of those factors sort of i don't know mixing together it it just mm-hmm. is ripe for that type of i don't understand why the hospital isn't just open from like 7 a.m to like 7 p.m you know <laughs> i don't like i I mean, I'm too I'm too dumb to come up with a solution for this, but it just you know when I think of the day and I think no, of no, nurses, we've got answers dude. <laughs> when I think of <laughs> we know uh, what we're talking about. You know, a hospital shift that is uh, like shift work that is 12 hours in a row. Mm. I just don't understand why they don't go. We could we could do you know 24 is also divisible by three, and mm. eight hours is like the normal amount of time that somebody usually works. So like instead of trying to fit three shifts in or two shifts into one day. Why don't we do three shifts? Yeah. I don't like, again, like I'm way too dumb to, to know, have the answers to this, but like probably a people, I don't numbers know. Of, yeah. Numbers of people issue. Um, yeah, maybe. So the use of VR continues to grow in clinical nursing practice. However, the existing body of evidence on VR, especially immersive virtual reality is limited. Um, said Sislowski in a press release. The research examined the general effectiveness of an immersive VR simulation training program. Um, that uh, the, I think the program that they were using is um, is a Surgeon Simulator. Uh, that's available. It's available on Steam right now. It's a, it's a great game. Um, Six ninety nine. Actually, fuck no, dude. <laughs> no, god no. Um, uh, so the, they were they were looking at the general effectiveness of, of immerse, immersive VR simulation training program that could serve as a replacement to p, um, pediatric clinical practice. Um, after one control group received typical inpatient clinical training and one intervention group completed simulated VR training, all students underwent an in-person simulation test to compare performance outcomes. Nursing students who carried out VR training demonstrated higher, higher performance in infection control initial assessment, and oxygen therapy. All sub, uh, subdomains th- that are tested and scored in nursing schools. Total performance scores were measured to be significantly higher for the VR group compared to the clinically trained students with no notable differences found in medication administration, focused assessments, or patient evaluations. Now, I wonder, I, when I read that, it makes me think, do you think that there could be an element to this a sort of novel element to this that is that is giving the nurse an experience that they're not quite used to, which is more memorable. And so therefore easier for them to like recall the things that they went through in the VR compared to the things that the other nurses might've gone through in the, like in the IRL setting. Right. So you've got the nurses that are doing the clinical thing and you know, they're not wearing a VR headset. Their, their, their eyes are, open to the world. They're present with like other people. This is something that they do regularly. 
maybe there's like slight distractions there or whatever, like from an educational standpoint, but then you take someone and you drop them into VR. And there's almost this kind of like, if you've never done VR before, the first time you ever step into it, it's memorable. You go, Whoa, totally. this is so fucking cool. And like, look at this. And so like, do you think maybe there's some kind of element there of like the novelness of, um, VR possibly kind of I attaching to their, their, their like memory or something. Yeah, maybe. I, I have two thoughts on this. One is, I think that that could be true. Also, I feel like um, in a simulation in a virtual world, it's really like that experience is really well curated and designed. So it's like you're going to spend this much time doing the oxygen stuff. You're going to spend this much time doing this type of stuff. You're going to spend, you know, it's probably divided up. When you have a real world practical experience as a nurse, you might never see something that is going to be on a test. You know, like just by the nature of what happens in the real world, there could be parts of that experience that you're going to be tested on down the road, but just by nature of, you know, your experience being in the hospital or whatever, um, you just don't get to see that thing. So I think the fact that it can be more curated in virtual reality can, can help assist with improving test scores. I don't necessarily know if that makes you a better nurse. I know that sure. one, but probably I mean the most important thing missing from virtual reality is real world person to person human experience. Sure. A hundred percent. Like a big part of being a nurse yeah. is like your ability to be there and support somebody who's going through something. Yeah. But I mean, tough regardless, well. you have to go through the, you have to go through the educational process to understand what it is that you're doing when you get to the actual like clinical work. For sure. And so it's, it's kind I mean, I think it's really cool that VR could play a role in, in at, like nurse education in the future in like in a, in a way where it's like it's just commonplace everyone knows like oh yeah so like i have my vr session coming up like this is what i do in nursing school and just like and, and i think if anything to uh anything to diminish uh or decrease the the rate of of like hey one of the consequences of needing new people always coming into a profession is that you have new people who don't have much experience coming into the Ooh. profession and by nature of being new and inexperienced, you make mistakes. Obviously those mistakes, and you get bullied. Those mistakes have value to them in terms of the way that you learn from them and go on to fix those mistakes in the future or not make those mistakes in the future. Um, but I guess if it helps, if it helps minimize the amount of mistakes that get made by inexperienced nurses that are inexperienced because they just are coming out of school and whatever, like that's helpful. So one of the reasons why they were doing this study is mm -hmm. that uh, the study, which was published in Science Direct, was aimed to determine new approaches to tackling increasing nursing school enrollments, which was a direct reaction to the previous nursing shortages throughout the pandemic. Um, they said, quote, new strategies must be employed to optimize learning, engage list learners and provide methods to ensure competency in future nursing graduates. So they actually just made the game free on Steam. And then That's right. they just started looking for high scores, and they were like, all right, yeah. the top 10 people get jobs. Yeah, if, if you've actually never played sim, uh, Surgeon Simulator, it, it's... Wait, is that a real game? It is, yeah. It's, it's like, it's basically... I asked that if it was real earlier, and you said it wasn't. No, I was saying it's not real that these fucking nurses were using a game on Steam to learn how to be oh, nurses. Oh, okay. Um, it is a real game. It's basically an operator, but we are. but you're like it's super supposed to be really silly. It's like hard to grab the things and you're oh, slicing okay. people open, transplanting hearts and shit. You know what? I really, <laughs> really don't, fun. guys, I really don't understand the sim simulator games like like flight sim. Okay, cool. You're flying an airplane. Dude, trucker sim. Kind of cool. Fuck yeah. No, that's that's what I was getting to is like I don't understand I get, trucker sim. I get trucker sim. sim. I understand that. I don't get but trucker sim. Do, yeah. Have you seen the guys with like the full yeah, on the built out like yeah. cockpits? Yeah. The 270 <laughs> degree fucking sc X screen or whatever. <laughs> I know a guy. I know Just a guy. Just be a trucker. One of, one, one, yeah. A friend of my mom's. Well, you'll husband. get paid. <laughs> Remember blind guy? Yeah, yeah. We I saw his setup. We, He's not blind, we, but yes. we flight simmed at his place. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. got a setup. Why but, do you call him blind guy? When we were young, he had just had um, like LASIK or something like that. Like we were probably like 12 or 13 maybe. And he, yeah. this guy had just had LASIK and he was over at my parents' place and he was wearing, he was wearing uh, very the, like, Tom the, like, the like blackout glasses that you have yeah. to wear after LASIK. 
And uh, and so Brian, so Brian, and, Brian, Brian, and, right. Brian and Dennis just started calling him blind guy. Well, we just we. Cool. Well, I'm sure uh, I'm sure our listeners really appreciate that. <laughs> um, no, no, All right. we didn't start calling him blind guy. We asked if he was blind, and then Taylor referred to him as blind guy because that's we'll how. And then Taylor started we picking on him, punching him. <laughs> Yeah, right. Just like you did with all the magic. God, why, you guys, why have you guys started developing this character who's such a bully? Uh, Wait, I mean, no, the character which was you, no, you like no, a few years ago? No, you no, developed that character no, in your childhood. No, no, you guys have developed this character. <laughs> and it's been, first it was a joke, and now and then it's and then I feel like you guys have sort of rolled it into thinking that it was real. And now you're, it comes up almost every day that I'm a bully. Well, I mean, the reason it's real, because it is, is because Brian and Dennis used to pick on you because you were smaller and weaker than them. And then you were like, I gotta t- I'm gotta, i going to fucking go to the States and take this out on these fucking nerds that go to my <laughs> private school. And then you started like spitting on the kids that played magic. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter, dude. Um, so all right, let's, now I'm getting built into a character yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, do you guys want to hear something uh, horrifying? Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about... That's a scary song. We're going to talk about the bizarre life what is that cycle. From? Is that 2049? Of a female. It's really loud. A dactylidium. A it, what? Is that from Blade Runner? All I could hear was this loud synthy thing. Well, why don't well, <laughs> you, you know, we're going to edit the podcast. <laughs> so. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, wait, what was Which it? Which now I'm going to edit by cutting out all that shit. No, don't leave it in. Um, what was the thing called? We, we're going to talk about the. It, this is a really short thing that I just read and it, it fucked me up. And I was like, God, we got to talk about it on the show. The bizarre life cycle of a female, a dactylidium. That sound is from the movie Annihilation. A female, a dactylidium is a mite and it is born already carrying several fertilized eggs. Oh, God. Okay. So a few days later, oh, no. the eggs in the, in, the, in, the, in the mite that was born that oh. already had the fertilized eggs in it, a few days later, those eggs hatch inside of her. Mm-mm. That gives rise to several females and one male. Okay. Then showing no regard for one of the strongest taboos in human society. The male makes fucky fuck with all the sisters. It's a goal inside the mother, inside the mom. Right. So, so mom's born, mom's got the fertilized eggs that gives birth to a bunch of sisters and a brother brother fucks all the sisters inside the mom, all the sisters. No, I get it. I see where you're going with this. But the, so, so the fetal incest thing isn't where it ends. Uh, they all they, the sisters also get pregnant, and they also have fertilized eggs inside of them, and then it's, it never ends. Well, gray goo. After they get impregnated by the de- by the by the brother, mm-hmm. by like basically the you know the top video on fucking porn. Sibling right now, porn is very very they sought after. The the siblings together proceed to eat the mother from the inside out. Oh fuck! And that completes their life cycle. Uh, in some species, the male joins the females in devouring their mother and exploring the outside world. But in others, he is never even born, just dies in the womb as soon as his, as his reproductive role has been fulfilled. And the entire process from female leaving her mother's body and then being eaten out from the inside herself lasts about four days. That's Dude, when I picture, horrific. when I picture like the idea of hell, that's hell. The hell is the is like basically Mites. Satan going, all right, for the next 300 years, um, you're going to just you're going to have consciousness. You're going to have you're going to know every, you're like it's you. But we're just going to take your your soul and we're going to put you into one of these mites. And then every time every time it goes through the cycle, you become one of those little babies and you eat out your mom. And then, oh, and then no, you don't eat out your mom. I'm I sorry. That's not mean. what I mean. I didn't mean I, you eat out your I mom. I know <laughs> what you mean, though. I got you I eat, got. Uh, your I, mom out from the inside. Oh, do you, fuck. Do you have a... Is there a palate cleanser? Oh, shit. Is I, there some sort of... Uh, on the same train of thought, I don't know. Oh, God. Um, that's fucking filthy. I, um, I, I just the other day, <laughs> speaking of mites, um, maybe this is something that you guys have heard before. It probably is. I think it's fairly, like, very um, known. Kind of go, makes its rounds. You guys remember when these Half, episodes used to have experts talk on them at the same time? I do remember. <laughs> Thankfully, oh, yeah. we split those oh, up. Yeah. You can find those on Wednesdays. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, half of the weight after 10 years, or sorry, he, or I guess it would be half the weight. In 10 years, so you buy a mattress, 10 years later, the, that mattress will be twice the oh, weight yeah. Yeah. that it was when you bought it. 
Yeah. And it's because half of its weight now is the semen that you left in it. <laughs> is, is, or wait, is that not it? Is mites. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Plus right. the semen. I thought it was the, I thought it was well, that's the mostly I mean, mites. That's what they're eating. <laughs> like, obviously, I mean, they're eating right? something. Isn't that filthy? Ugh. How gross so wait, is that? Sweet, it's mites? It's dust not mi- skin. It's not dust skin. Mites. What is a dust mite? Is a dust mite just dead skin cells? No, a dust mite is a little bug. What is a dust mite? It, it's, it eats skin cells. Oh, yeah. Dust mites are very small insect-like pests that feed on dead human skin cells and thrive in warm, humid settings. Oh, God. I don't like God, any of this. We've gone to such a Can dark Can dust place. mites, like, hurt you? Like, are dust mites bad for you? Mm, well, I, I, this is on the uh, this is on the American Lung Association. You can be very allergic to them. Oh, yeah? Did you guys see the video? Or I you can be mildly allergic to them. They're not the- parasites that bite, sting, or burrow. Instead, people who are allergic to dust or dust mites are reacting to inhaling proteins in dust that comes from dust mite shit. Oh, my God. Urine or decaying bodies. Holy <laughs> Dude, that is uh, this. <laughs> so when you know you're, what? That's why you need a mattress protector. That's why oh a mattress God, protector is. Now I have one. Sweet. Um, so do I. So, oh my God, dude. That's so you need a mattress. Fucking, so I need a mattress detect- protector ASAP. So you're not actually. I do you have one. Okay, so you didn't know why. Wait, 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 wait. Guys. Now I know. So you're not actually allergic to dust. You're allergic to dust mite shit. Yeah. To the to the to the debris. Well, no, no, that no, sorry. Gets sorry. Protein. Dust. It does say that people who are allergic to dust or dust mites. Oh no, yeah, you're right. It's not yeah, it's that you're you're actually just reacting to proteins in dust that comes from dust mite feces, urine, or decaying. Yeah. So now when yeah, any yeah, yeah. when anybody yeah. ever says that they're allergic to dust, we can correct them and say it's actually shit. Dust mite poo poo. Any swelling or inflammation of the nasal passages caused by dust mites is considered a dust allergy, but really it's a shit allergy. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. Dust mites can can live in the bedding, mattresses, upholstered furniture, carpets, or curtains in your home. Dust mites are nearly everywhere. D- Roughly four out of five homes in the United States have dust mite also allergens. Your pillows. At least one bed. Gotta did, replace your pillows. Did you guys? Did you yeah. guys? They're in there. Like guys, how often? Like once a week? Anytime guys. anytime you take your anytime you take your pillowcase off and you go, Oh fuck. Change it. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially in your bedroom. Like you know that, Dude, that yeah, talking that about thick, talking about sort th- of talking about thriving in <laughs> warm, humid settings. Yeah, that that Holy like m- shit, that musky dude. mist that's just in your room <gasps> constantly. <laughs> dude, that's a that's a dust, dust mite orgy. Honestly, I've ever seen one. I wouldn't be surprised that your mattress doesn't weigh four times. The dust mite, of- dust mites that sh- that just like a awa- that like come online in Taylor's vicinity. <gasps> That's them. <laughs> hey guys, did you see that uh, the video that I posted on my? Oh, oh. <laughs> did you see the video oh I posted God. on my Instagram yesterday? Almost certainly not. It was of uh, Maui the golden retriever. Maui is the name. Yeah, he's really clumsy. He's a clumsy golden retriever. Dude, is he fucking I hanging? Is, is he I hanging know loose? another clumsy golden retriever too. He takes his head in like soccer nets mesh and like gets his nose stuck. Like Airbud. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Was that? Were you trying to like cleanse the, yeah, the was there palate anything? there? I was trying to think of something different than right. what we were just talking about. Well, let's move good. on to phobias, shall we? Um, hey, do you guys know what? <laughs> call call ref, call rephobia, call fear of diarrhea, fear of being boiled alive. It's C O U L R O, colrophobia. What is it? C C O U L R O, colro, colrophobia. I don't know. It is the fear. fear of colors. It is. It's. Oh, so here, uh, it's not this. Mary, you won't let go of me. Oh yeah. Bring out the arm. No! No! Oh, dude, that's Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's. <laughs> What did we just watch? Dude, that lady's afraid of olives. <laughs> <laughs> That's Taylor leaving snappy tomato pizza after they put olives on his pizza. This is the video I'm so excited to show you guys because Taylor actually does have a fear of olives. Um, that was, I think that was Taylor's mom. Let's watch it one more time. There's <laughs> Uriel. Look at her. Let go of me. It's hereditary. Bring out the olives. Bring out the olives. <laughs> Dude, the PA tackles are to be like, 
<laughs> Dude, how many years do you think Maury, how many years do you think Maury oh, was shit. doing that show where he was just like, where he just woke up in the morning and he looked in the mirror and just went, fuck, I fucking hate fuck my life. Me. <laughs> yeah. Um. So cholerophobia is not that. Cholerophobia is actually the uh, the fear of clowns. Okay. So uh, this is a this is a really interesting article from Sci Post. Um, uh, rarely do I like doing Sci Post articles, but this is one that I was kind of enjoyed. So people's fear of clowns is linked to unpredictable behavior and uncertainty about intent. A study finds. So this study was basically they were trying to figure out why are people so f- afraid of clowns? Where does this come from? Like what is this from? And uh, and I don't have I don't have color phobia, but you get it. I don't I actually don't. <laughs> Yeah, I actually don't get it. I, I actually wanted to go to school to become a clown. So when I hear that people are afraid of clowns, I get so sad because <laughs> clowns are so, clowns are great. Clowns are fucking amazing. I get like they're not it, though. I get it. The clown is like a spooky clown. Or like, have you guys ever have you guys seen Art the Clown? No. From Terrifier, no. Terrifier Two. Clowns are just in general uh, discomforting. Well, do you think this they, is a, do you think just, this is a discomforting they just, they, clown? I do. I do. I really do. See, I feel the opposite about it. I feel like the fact that it is a clown makes it less scary. Like it for me, me, Terrifier. The Terrifier series is kind of a. I mean, it's well, no. So I don't think. I I, I all agree with you, Brian. I think that the fact that the that the horrifying thing in a horror movie is a clown is makes it more funny and less and less scary. But clowns are never fun. I, I don't think I'm afraid of clowns. I think I'm afraid of the type of people who want to be clowns. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, I think maybe yeah, like like Jeremy, like Jer. I think. Well, I mean, I don't know. You I guys are you guys that. aren't. I didn't, want, I didn't want to be that kind of. Clown. You guys aren't uh, major Seinfeld fans, are you? Or yeah, I, yeah I love Seinfeld. All right, so, do you guys remember Crazy Joe Devola in in no. Seinfeld? Crazy Joe Devola is like a character that is um, that is a, becomes obsessed with Elaine. And and Elaine is da- <laughs> Elaine is actually dating him, but she doesn't know that he's like obsessed, obsessed with her. Anyway, in the series, she finds out Jerry thinks that J- Joe Devol is gonna wants to kill him, which he does, <laughs> and uh, and and he dresses up as a clown. And I watched Seinfeld at, with my dad. You know, I saw I saw every episode of Seinfeld probably twice before I ever knew what the fuck was going on in any episode, like before I understood it. And crazy Joe DiVolo was this clown and he was a scary clown, like a clown, exactly what you mean. Like don't know the intent, like dressed up with that, like evil smile. I think if you want to, you're, you're like, like this, this, like this kind of (laughs) like, because they pop, 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 (laughs) pop, 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 That is for sure. Is that from it? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. It it reminds me of like the Joker, like in in the movie Joker, the clowns that are in like the dressing room, those types of people. Without you both. They're scary. You don't want to lose it, Georgie. Oh, we need to turn this off. We all float down here, Georgie. (laughs) You know the clowns in the dressing room, like with the Joker? Yeah. Like those types of, it's not them in their clown that's scary it's like the type of person it's who wants real to do that, that is like hey it, dude fuck you man clown's actually a beautiful art uh, like clown is a is no, again, a art I'm, form that is amazing i'm not talking about the art brings form. so much joy to so many people except for these fucking wussy wusses who have cholerophobia um but if you don't like clowns it's first okay. of all it's fuck, okay fuck you no it's okay second of all He's coming to get you. No, they're not. You're good. You're going to float down there, too. You'll be fine. Probably um, is coming to get you. They're pretty scary. But a new a new study, so a new study investigating the origins of color phobia. We're going to have to put a trigger warning on this. Uh, found that the, the uncertainty of harmful intent, this is a big one, media influences, which I think is like, pro- I, th- I think that's probably yeah. one of the biggest. Um, and unpredictability of behavior are key drivers of this fear. Uh, various features of clowns' appearance uh, also produce a negative experience and a sense of direct threat. The study was published in Frontiers of Psychology. So clowns are, if you don't know, <laughs> entertainers dressed in traditional clown costumes <laughs> and wearing exaggerated makeup. 
Um, Great descriptor. They've been integral uh, parts of entertainment events, particularly circus shows and children's parties for centuries. <laughs> Do you think you've ever met somebody like a 40 year old and been the like, fuck is a clown? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I saw this clown show the other day and they're like, what's a, what's a show? What's a, what is a clown? Sorry. What's a clown? <laughs> so they're they're typically depicted as That's friend- a utopia. <laughs> they're they're typically depicted as friendly figures of fun and comedy. Uh, however, clowns' performances are also characterized by erratic behavior that can uh, that can as easily upset as entertain. For example, coaxing a shy, shy child to be a part of a magic trick or spraying a surprise jet of water at the audience may be quite upsetting. I don't like clowns. For some. <laughs> uh, clowns are often depicted in a different way as well. Uh, they can be presented as tricksters or characters that can be both benevolent or uh, mal- malign at a whim. So the movie, you know, The Joker is an example of a clown uh, presented as a, uh, a malignant entity. Uh, the same is the case with the modern trope of killer clowns like Art the Clown, It, um, John Wayne Gacy was an actual real life killer clown that actually probably will come get you if you're afraid of clowns. So lock your doors. Oh my God. Do you um, think there's more killer clowns than there are fun clowns? Definitely not, but. Uh, well, let's try this. Let's, let, let's figure it out. We've got Art. We've got. How many clowns it. can you name? We've got. <laughs> Bozo. Uh, we've Bozo. got. Well, Bozo's a good clown. Hold on. Yeah, right, we're, right. we're going, we're going bad clowns first. So Art, It, um, there's one, there's one horror Joe movie Duvall, on, on Netflix, or sorry, on Sh- on Shutter that had a clown. I forget his name, but he was very scary. The Joker. The Joker's a bad boy. That's all I can really think of. Okay, now how many clowns? John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy's all yeah, and that's real life. Okay, so those are five bad boys. Now the good boys. Bozo. Ronald McDonald. Bozo. I feel like Ronald McDonald's got uh, devious intentions though. You know why I think he's got the devious intention? Is that big purple guy. Yeah. Um, What's his deal? He just came back, guy. didn't he? The fucking like chicken Grimace. nugget man or whatever. I don't know what the fuck he is. <laughs> oh, Grimace. What the fuck is Grimace? Oh, right. All the characters. Grimace. What's he right. supposed to be? And the Hamburglar and all those guys? Yeah. He's a tongue. He's like your rotten tongue. He was a potato. Rot- was he not? Isn't he a potato? He's a tumor, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is a tumor. He's, he's what you get if you eat too much of the McDonald's. fucking bur- the, the hamburger. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to Google what is Grimace. That's really funny. Tumor. Um, okay, so uh, studies have shown that the uh, malignant representation of clowns started around the end of the 19th century. So, you know, 1800s, late 1800s when this kind of started, which I think is kind of interesting. Dude, what, what, the, what the fuck, fuck is, is that? that? Thing? What is Grimace? So connected to this, a real life phenomenon of colrophobia or fear of clowns emerged and studies indicate that it, it, it is present in between 1.5 and 17% of adults. That's a, that's, that's a big I number. Mean, 17%. That's a massive a big number. amount of people to have the same phobia, um, which it makes me wonder like, what is the, how does this stack up against the phobia of heights? I think there's also I think is also a very common one. I think there's also probably also heights and with a bunch of phobias. I think that there's probably an over uh I think the statistic is probably skewed uh incorrectly because when you ask somebody if they've got a phobia of something, I think people generally use the word phobia in the same way that mm. people use the word like I've got OCD or like like Oh my yeah. god! I've just I'm de- oh the last I was I, this happened to me and I was so depressed. It's like well you were sad. Well you're neat and tidy. Mm. And people think yeah like people go that, like I don't like on that Maury. lady who's scared of, <laughs> of olives. She that's a phobia. phobia. That's a phobia. That, yeah. yeah. But like I wouldn't say that I have a phobia of clowns. But if if I was surveyed and I was just I was just using scared or don't like yeah. as a synonym for phobia, then I'd be like yeah sure. I, yeah, I, I would yeah. say I used to have a phobia of hornets. But as a, now as an adult, I don't think I have a phobia of them, but I really don't like them. Sure. So like you, I, I will, you I will fucking get the fuck out of the room when there's one nearby. I used know? to have a legit phobia of, of spiders. Arachnophobia, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's cleared up. Yo, guys, I got to the bottom of it. Yeah, he's a tumor. Quickly. We already figured it out. No, he's not, but it's also equally as gross. Um, <laughs> he's lard. He's lard. An Just award-winning lard. McDonald's manager in Canada has seemingly revealed a bit of little-known company lore in a recent interview with CBC where he confidently stated that Grimace, the large purple anthropomorphic thing... Can I guess? ...that <laughs> hangs out with Ronald McDonald... Can I guess what it is? ...is supposed to be a... Is it the goop that 
a, that chicken nuggets are before we make them into chicken nuggets? No, that's pink. So oh, okay, but okay. close. Okay. It's a he's a huge engorged taste bud. Holy fuck, that's gross. That is super gross. He is an enormous taste bud, but a taste bud nonetheless. Oh. That was a quote from the McDonald's and manager. And he's particularly oh. he's particularly drawn to sodium. That's, <laughs> look, dude, look at this. <laughs> I'm gonna put this. Yeah. I'm gonna put this into the YouTube. I don't video want. I don't want any of that on my tongue, yeah. dude. Um. So two studies. This is really interesting too. Which is actually this reminds me of another good clown we know. Uh, two studies on medical staff and parents whose children were hospitalized report fear of medical clowns between 18% and 46% of participants who medical were in clowns. the studies. How many medical clowns are there? What do we... What Robin world? Williams. Robin Williams in fucking... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Patch Adams. Patch Adams. That's a good clown. <laughs> that's a good clown. You know? One uh, for the good guys. <laughs> study author Philip John Tyson and his colleagues wanted to explore the origins of fear of clowns in a group of people who reported such fear. They also wanted to test a new scale for assessing cholerophobia and examine gender and age differences in the level of this fear. So they had 528 individuals, mostly from the UK, uh, who, who said that they had a fear of clowns to some certain degree. 85 per- participants were actually female, and the average age of participants was 28. They completed a, an origin of fear of clowns questionnaire, the OFCQ. Of course. Uh, created We're by familiar. the study authors. And the questionnaire assessed experiences from two aspects of clown. Uh, Physical appearance that author calls uh, uncanny, uncanny valley. So uh, I think clowns look disturbing. Uh, and hidden emotional signals. I cannot read a clown's facial expression. It also assesses their unpredictability. I worry a clown will do something unexpected. Um, two aspects experience uh, related to clowns. Experiences modeled from friends and family. Quote, I have a significant family member or close friend who is afraid of clowns. And those based on portrayals in the media. I've seen scary scenes in films involved. In I actually, clowns. I'm the more I think about this, the more I realize I really just don't like clowns. I'm yeah, not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of them I, either. I've for the, all of the reasons you just said, it sucks when there's a clown around. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like it feels like at any given moment you could be the butt of the joke that everybody's gonna like. The clown makes people laugh at you. It's like they take a fucking flower that has a little spray gun in it and they walk up to you and they spray you in the face Brian. and at. Well, that's actually Brian, that's at Brian, your your Brian. expense. Everyone else is fucking Brian, laughing. This sounds like a crumpled up piece of paper that I need to pull out of my fucking pull out therapy. You need to flatten it, mason jar. You need to refile it. it away. File yeah. it into a jar that goes into yeah. a cupboard and, to, and shelve it on the in the filing cabinet. I want you to take this out and, and iron this <laughs> Guys, with your therapist. Thank God for therapy. <laughs> I will say to come to the defense of clowns because I was going to go to clown school. Th- uh, that's a bad clown. That's just bad clowning. A good clown is a clown that makes fun of itself, which in turn reflects a mirror on the audience to make them think about how silly we all are. Wow. (laughs) Results show participants reported hidden emotional signals and negative meter portrayals as contributing the most uh, to the sphere of clowns. So, so hidden emotional signals, not really knowing what the fuck like a clown is. Are are you smiling or are you thinking about stabbing me 500 times with a fucking hacksaw. Most likely that. Um, and <laughs> negative media portrayals were the biggest things. Um, <clears throat> learning and experience related to clowns and frightening experiences were uh, least reported. So it wasn't like, you know, I went to this birthday party and one of the clowns showed up and, you know, kidnapped my friend. And that's it what makes my it friend a- died and it was fucking <laughs> John Wayne Gacy that did it. Like, that's not the thing. Yeah, because it's a phobia and phobias yeah. are unreasonable fears. Um, this was really great. <laughs> hey, I like it. I like this shit. Guys, we should stop clowning around. Um, <laughs> you wow, that, was, uh, <laughs> that was really good. Thanks. Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on to uh, this last little bit here. Uh, this is... Do you, guys, do you guys know much about the eruption of Vesuvius? And like Pompeii, and like I've never what even that, been to Mount Vesuvius. What that, what that looked like? <laughs> I've never even been to Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thanks, Olaf. Cool story, Hansel. Um, <laughs> but do you, are you guys like? I'm so glad that I was in there. Are you guys familiar with um, Pompeii and like what that? Like I'm, I'm sure you you know that there was a giant volcano. I do. But yep. blew, like blasted Pompeii away. Yeah. Um. But but do you guys did you guys ever hear? Um. Stuff you should know. 
podcast has been around for fucking ever. Really great podcast. They did an episode on Pompeii. And I remember tuning in. It was like on a road trip. I was like, I'm going to tune into this, I guess. And I put it on. And I love, uh, I love horror. Uh, and when I'm looking for things on like, st- like, a, like a podcast like stuff you should know, I'm usually looking for the stuff that's a little bit fucking morbid, a little fucked up, a little dark. And the Pompeii thing, I actually wasn't expecting to get that. I was, I was, I was just like, oh, this would be interesting. Like there was a, a volcano. I kind of was wondering like what, how do volcanoes work? Like that's what I was kind of fucking anticipating. Yeah. Dude, they go through what, 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 you know, archaeologists and, and researchers know about the event. And it turned into like one of the scariest podcasts I've ever listened to. It is a fucking horrifying, horrifying event. It's like when you hear the stories, like the, the like, like on the ground stories of the people that were a part of like Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And like those, those really horrendous stories that make you like have this deep feeling of like, oh my good God, that is actual hell <clears throat> is it is it like is pompeii it because, was like that to to like an even more extreme do you mean degree. because like when we typically think of like okay uh uh pompeii happened the volcano erupted everybody got covered in lava and died like that's generally like how you might like think of it in in the moment it was so far from that but when you like really like lava. when you when you really like dig into what really happened mm-hmm. in the time between like the volcano erupting and people dying and the travesty. Yeah. Yeah. Like it actually is way worse than it's you. It's a good thumbnail. Clip way worse. What really happened? Yeah. Way worse. It's way, way worse than, than that. Exactly. And it, and so it's, it's, it, it is there. Did I they, mean, the, like the, the thing that makes that podcast so scary is like, yes, there are the people that when the, when the first eruption happened, it was like, there was like a, almost like a ground zero that, you know, you were vaporized immediately. You didn't feel shit, but you know, it, it it covered a massive, massive portion of of landscape, and you know whether you were on Pompeii, whether you were in uh, like the, like the Herculean area, like there were the, there were the other islands that like were that were affected, but not as like they weren't like immediately vaporized. They were affected in a way that it was dragged out of the span of you know like four, five, six days of fucking mm-hmm. hell. But then the other thing that on part, on top of that that made, makes it so fucking scary is like this is at a, t- a period in time where no one knew what volcanoes were. They had no idea what a fucking volcano was. Just this just Zeus was this just happened, and they went, "Well, the world's ending. Yeah, like, we are done." And really, they didn't know what volcanoes were. No, no, because so so think about th- this is ba- this is one of the other. Re- I mean, th- th- we're getting away from what I wanted to get into here, but but one of the reasons why there were so many people living around that volcano is because there was a period in time that were that archaeologists think where, um, the, the volcano had, that volcano had erupted thousands of years prior, killed everybody that was there. Yes. And those thousands of years prior, those thousands (laughs) of years prior, that land was lived on by a fuck ton of people. And all those people were there because the land that surrounds a volcano it's very fertile. is super fertile. And this particular volcano, this, the area in this, like the space in this area is beautiful. I mean, like it, the, the temperatures are perfect. It's fucking gorgeous. The land is fertile. There's plenty of like fruits and vegetables and food and like the agriculture, like all that stuff is like thriving there. I thought it was just like rock. No, no, it's a, no. It oh. is, it is like it is Initially. immediately, and by immediately, I mean like geologically immediately. So, like probably for like hundreds of years after, it's like not usable. But then, as whatever geological process happens, it becomes like it the becomes most fertile, the like most fertile land, land it, like, like Maui that, that we know. Of. Yes, yeah, yeah, right, exactly, right. Like if you've been to if you've been to Hawaii, you know, it's like holy shit, yeah. this is beautiful. They think that the last time that that ex- exploded was like. 500 years ago or something like that. 600 years ago. So all the people that lived in Pompeii before that eruption, they had no idea. To them, this was the way things always were. And then just like the people before them, but that, you know, a couple thousand years prior, they got fucking obliterated. Yeah. And it wasn't until, it wasn't until we started to notice this happening where we went, Oh, volcanoes. Now that you say this, like I'm, 
I feel like I'm gaining a little bit more respect for the devastation that volcanoes can cause. But, um, you know, we were talking about this beforehand and I told you about the South Park episode ever since I was a kid and I saw the South Park episode with duck and cover. But what I've should you do if a volcano afraid of erupts volcanoes. near you or your family? So what will you do when you hear a volcano erupting? That's right. Duck and cover. That's right. Looks like you got the idea. Duck and cover. Thank you and goodbye. Simple. Yeah. Look, the volcano! Quick! Duck and cover! Wait, hold on. Wait, I don't, what's his dog and cover? Is there a duck? Are you are you just referencing that, Bri? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, that that I I highly suggest going and listen to that podcast because it is it it is a wonderful exploration of like the into the experience that the people of Pompeii had in those like days that basically um, decimated an entire population of people. Um, but there's been new research that has come out of the Mount Vesuvius eruption from 79 CE. So ancient Vesuvius victims were vaporized to the point where they, their brains turned to glass. No. So the calamitous eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 CE completely obliterated people living in nearby Roman towns, including Pompeii and Herculan- Her- Herculaneum. Herculaneum, earning it a reputation as one of history's most blood-curdling horror stories. Now, scientists have discovered new and terrifying details about that day that could have real-world implications for the hundreds of thousands of people who still live in the blast zone of this tempestuous volcano, which could produce another disastrous blast again one day. So the research unveils previously unknown evidence that a cloud of hot gas with temperatures of more than 550 degrees Celsius, for American listeners, that's 1,031 degrees Fahrenheit, initially swept through Herculaneum, essentially vaporizing countless victims before the area was deluged by currents made of thicker ash. So, boom, explosion happens, and there is this, hot gas that just goes and it is so hot that it transformed the brains of the people that were hit by it into glass you think it basically like cooked them in their skulls or like glass them in their skulls so it's like because they were contained in Mm -hmm. that space it was just like i mean it's like it's like i guess that's like three times hotter than you would than you would cook like anything in your oven. Yeah. So th- this early surge of hot gas is known as the pyroclastic density current, a PDC current. Um, it could help explain some of the bone chilling finds at Herculaneum, including a piece of brain that was transformed to glass by the shock of the heat. Honestly, if you don't show me a glass brain, I'm going to be kind of yeah, I wish I wish I, I wish I had one. Um, um, I mean, uh, you, you can just up. Google like <laughs> glass shaped brain and then there you go. Okay. Uh, researchers, led by, uh, researchers led by Alessandra Pensa, a geologist at University of Roma, Trey, reconstructed this new timeline of the disaster by examining charcoal deposits across the ruins of Herculaneum. The results revealed the first direct assessment of the extreme high temperature impact of the very first ash cloud, which killed people and affected infrastructures, according to a study published last week in Scientific Reports. Quote, despite the 79 CE Uh, Being one of the most studied eruptions, the exact timing and the causes of death at Pompeii and Herculaneum are still debated, bearing implications for volcanological, archaeological, and forensic anthropological studies, Pensa said. Is that, that's the brain there? Whoa, dude, look at that. That just looks like. That's the most like, that's the most uh, textured one I could find. Ew. Um, all right. You can't really. It, I mean, it doesn't look like. Doesn't look like brain. Doesn't look like what you think a brain yeah. would look like. I wanted um, to see a. But I guess if a brain was just turned into glass, I'm sure it would look not like a brain. I right. wanted to see one that was like polished and yeah. like looked the shape that I had in my head. You know. Yeah, so right. you wanted to be perfectly the way that you wanted it to be. Yeah. So this right. uh, this charcoal um, proved to be the only proxy capable of recording multiple ephemeral extreme thermal events, thus revealing for the first time the real thermal impact of the 79 CE eruption. Pompeii is the most famous settlement destroyed by this ancient eruption, in part because layers of ash 
buried the town and its residents, leaving them eerily preserved for nearly 2,000 years. Whoa. And, uh, when I, and when they say eerily preserved, it's actually quite astonishing. They, when, you know, when Pompeii was discovered, um, they were opening up these like sort of, they were going into the homes of these people that were buried underground. I want to see somebody like, do you have a picture of somebody like, I don't, I don't have one here, but but like we we can put one up right here, so we'll we'll bring it up yeah. like uh, uh, like fucking. Um, what's I don't his see name? like I don't, Han Solo. If I don't see someone frozen in time, I'm gonna be. Disappointed. Well, they they really truly were frozen in time, and they, like they were frozen, uh, like some of them were frozen in embrace, hugging, <clears throat> or some of them oh. are 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 frozen like um uh just you know like sitting at a table or like you know in, in these poses where they just look like. They just look like the, a picture was taken of them. They're literally speaking posing. of which, speaking of which, um, Dennis, if you're listening, skip ahead uh, about a minute right now. Um, did you guys see that the black box um, for that that Paris oh flight that was found um, in this? There's this big lawsuit I love how about you just whether put or not, an individual trigger warning for it's for my brother. For it's for my brother, and I need to do this because <laughs> for I anybody who is afraid of planes, no, it's for planes going down. I just care about my brother. But, but uh, there was a black box found from a plane that crashed over the Atlantic Ocean, and um, you know what the the pilot's last words were in the to each other in the cockpit? It looks like a Tic Tac. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, was dude. it not? No, Whoa, it, was, oh. it was. It was. It was. It was. Hey, it was a good guess. It guys, was a good guess. It was. Is that a? Is that a weather balloon? <laughs> Could have been that. <laughs> it was. Fuck. We're dead. Oh. Oh shit. Wow. That's not good. And that just reminds me of like like that moment before you know you're gonna die and you're just like yeah. fuck. We're dead. Yeah. That's well, like the scariest thing. I think that's the scariest. I'd rather thing die ever. like that. I'd rather die like that than not uh, starve to death. I'd rather die. Well, yes. Any like. I'd rather die like that than, I mean, this is, I'm not going to get, get into this right now, but like reading Peter Atiyah's book and going into like the, like the, what he calls the four horsemen. It was like, um, uh, like cancer and cancer, uh, heart disease, um, dementia related, uh, disease and, and I man can't cults. remember what the other one was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tummy, yeah. tummy, Taylor's, tummy Taylor's man cold. Um, uh, <laughs> Which which he calls slow slow death, which is like what we need to like be focusing our medicine on now. Yeah, um, and like <laughs> those things, the things that like that dr- scares you more. Draw out for years, or the things that are like things that we don't even know are happening in our bodies right now that might kill us in the three decades. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like you just I'd imagine. Ra- what I'd, ra- I'd rather have a moment of like panic and be dead. Imagine like what these people in their homes when the volcano was blowing up, who are like embracing each other, just like. They're like, fuck, we're dead. Yep. Yep. And they were. And then they were frozen in time. Um, so so Pompeii is the most famous one. Um, however, researchers working at the nearby seaside town of Her- Herculaneum, that's such a hard word for me, Herculaneum, have discovered many bizarre curiosities in the ruins, including a piece of human brain that appears to have been uh, vitrified into glass during the fallout of the eruption. And these clues suggest that the people of Herculaneum perhaps suffered an even more gruesome fate than those of Pompeii. Oh. Quote, the heat-induced effects suffered by the victims, notably the explosion and charring of skulls, vaporization of brains, cracked and charred bones, cracked teeth, concentration, uh, contraction of limbs, and thermal degradation of blood, hemoproteins, indicate the occurrence of an extremely high thermal event higher than the previously estimated temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius. By analyzing the charcoal deposits, the team was able to estimate the temperature of the initial diluted current that decimated Herculaneum. This early blast of gas was at minimum 550 degrees Celsius, making it at least 100 degrees hotter than the following ash clouds that later blanketed the, land, blanketed the landscape and um, subs- subsumed buildings and communities. The results helped to explain some of the scary finds at Herculaneum, including a piece of glassy brain. It's frightening enough to imagine this cloud of hot gas incinerating the Roman era population surrounding Vesuvius, but researchers also raise alarm about the overlooked threat of PDCs in a modern context. The study notes that a similar sequence of deadly events has been observed in recent eruptions, such as the 1902 ash surge that destroyed St. Pierre, Martinique, 
killing tens of thousands of people. The team ominously warns that communities surrounding Vesuvius, including the bustling city of Naples, may not be prepared for a repeat of an ephemeral hot dilute event that they have discovered written in millennia old charcoal. Um, Whoa. I mean, it, uh, I can't remember. I think I was reading about, um, I was reading about, uh, about Haleakala yes. on, on Maui. Um, and they were talking about like the way that they classify volcanoes in terms of like what the risk factor is. I can't remember what the scale is. The scale is like one to nine or something like that. And I think, I think actually like nine being the safest maybe. And that, you know, most volcanoes are like eight, you know, it's like they're, 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 uh, most volcanoes are like, we, we're fairly certain that this will not like, this has almost no chance of like erupting. In our lifetime or like, or it, like, it, I, I don't, I don't know in like the immediate future. Like I, right. I don't in a little know. bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what the time scale is that they're using, but like, I mean, at the end of the day, man, you are just never, you're never, obvi- you're never sure. Like yeah. if you go to, um, there are two on Bali, there are two volcanoes that are, um, I mean, I guess in terms of like landscape, they're right next to each other. Like Mount they're, Titty Titty. They're, they're closer. They're closer together than the two volcanic formations on Maui. I mean, you guys have both been to Maui, so you know how close those are together. They're closer than that. Um, and, and they really are, you know how on Maui, it's like one's like a fucking volcano and one's like, looks like more like mountains, but the other ones, it, that is, that is like a volcano, volcano area on Bali. They're, they're like, one is like a really fucking massive volcano. And the other one's just like a small, like just like a mini version of that, but still very big. And when you go up to the smaller one, up to the top of the smaller one, we did a sunrise hike there once. You are looking down. You you kind of have this, um, not a 360 panorama of everything, but almost. And on one side, you've got this like extremely lush, beautiful landscape that's just green. And there's all, all these villages and everything. And then there is a hard black line. And it's because Ooh. that volcano erupted in like 1968 or something like that, sometime in the 60s. And so the the it's just black rock and it's for for like for like 80 degrees of your view. I mean Maui's similar when you go down past um mm-hmm. when you uh, see like how south of Kihei and like yeah. go down like to, how one uh, side of the island is very lush and one's like very dry. Totally. Yeah. And it's probably because I'm um, it's almost certainly because when it erupted last, it erupted and it all went down like that it all went down that side. But you can see how on Maui for example it's not black. It just looks kind of dry and arid because that happened like 500 years ago or something like that. So like that land in the next hundred years or so is probably hundred. I don't, I'm not a fucking geologist in the next couple hundred years is probably coming up to being going to turn more into what Maui is on the other side, like this very fertile, but anyway, on Bali, it's very stark. It's like a line Mm -hmm. and you can just see like, and and the houses in the lush area, they go right up to the black line. So you can see, like, obviously, they were all there in the 60s. They were all there where now it's just, it's just black rock. Ooh. And then they just went, we're just going to move over to the line. Do you think the people who, like, who were close to the line but didn't get consumed, they were, like, do you think they were, like, sick? They were, like, super stoked they were i mean there was probably quite a bit of sadness i would say yeah. i mean probably a little bit of stokeness as well like they mixed feelings they, you know i'd say mixed feelings yeah bittersweet yeah. um but it's not like they have anywhere to go it's not like that's a population of people especially in the 60s that were like oh we can just go live somewhere else like they got to mm. be there mm. they have no choice and like they're living under the threat of that thing going off who knows when <laughs> it's interesting because it's kind of like you know like it's like your um tell you your philosophy about plane crashes again sorry dennis um but like if there's a plane crash that happens the day before your flight's about to take off you getting on the plane the next day it's you're probably actually odds are probably even better that you're not going to get in a plane accident because they're so few and far between that if one just happened it's really unlikely for it to happen again 
it's kind of the same with like volcanoes. Like, you know, if it just erupted, it's not going to erupt again. I don't know if I'd hold the same <laughs> yeah, philosophy. I don't know if I would uh, either. I mean, yeah. plane crashes, like, I think that plane crashes happen because there's some type of error that occurs. Yeah, I think volcanoes are going because they're like, Earth tough. needs to fart, and, <laughs> and he's got gas, and that wasn't the only fart. Yeah, yeah. but once so you, hold, you like, know, fucking like hold once, on. Once you release your gas, you're good for a while again. Uh, maybe un- until like a super volcano erupts and then just turns the whole planet into a series of volcanoes that never stop blowing up, sure. and we're done. If and a volcano, we're done, bud. The Earth used to be that. Yeah. If a volcano erupted nearby here, and we were, you know, say we had like uh, 45 minutes heads up and we were potentially going to be vaporized, what Dad. would you do? Oh my God, I'd just spend time with my child and Dude, I'd find a gun. Go to the airport. I'd find a gun. Yeah. You go to the yeah. airport? Because it'd be yeah, super dude. not busy. Um, well, I think I think that. Yeah. Um, Why would you go to the airport? Are you, wait, are you fucking, the only one who has to, the heads up? Just to, just to like be in a shitty place while you die? <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, I'd find a gun, put it in my mouth, oh, God. and wow. say goodnight. Did uh, I tell you guys about honestly, Maui? Like, I, I had the, so I, the golden I, retriever? I heard, I, heard yeah. someone, I, heard, <laughs> I heard someone saying this the other day. It made me think, I was like, you know, this is kind of a good point. Like, it was this woman on TikTok. It was quite funny. She was like, what the fuck is with all these fucking shows like Last of Us and all these people like trying to fucking live and survive? She's like, are you kidding me? If there was a zombie outbreak, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not fighting for my life. I'm going to fucking check out because that's who wants to live yeah. in that world. And I was it. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. More of a, yeah, I, I, I don't try know to, if I would be I the I, one. I, like, guys, I yeah. try to find beauty in the everyday. And like, even it amidst... A, a zombie outbreak. I think I'd be able to, like, you know, look at the sunrise and appreciate the sunrise. Like, yeah, look okay. at the sunset, Whatever, appreciate the. You know, yeah, on, on the on yeah. the topic of volcanoes, I think that you guys would. I, I bet you would love the sunrise while you're watching the sunrise <laughs> and have and have like 15 feral zombies eating your intestines out of your fucking <laughs> yeah, ass. Yeah, it'd be nice. I, I mean, I read Man Search for Meaning, and so yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of volcanoes, I think you guys would enjoy this. Have you? Do you guys ever go to Google Maps and just like? Look at places. Just fucking look at, at random places. I mean, I play that geo guesser game. Right. Okay. So, um, Similar, so yeah. Actually. So <laughs> if you go to, uh, if you go to like the farthest Eastern point of Russia and then sort of like go down, there's like a, there's like a, a sort of like peninsula that like reaches out towards Japan. And it is, I mean, it's just like a barren, like nobody lives there. There is a crazy amount of just like they just look like like nipples poking up out of the ground. There's just no, like a, ton, a ton yeah. of volcanoes, and it's just like a f- and if you then just go and and go okay, like f- you find a volcano and there's a name to it, and you just go to Wikipedia and you go, oh, what's that? Like what's that one? And you go and you just start looking at like photos of this place and like the landscapes, dude. There are places on Earth that are just they're just it's it's another world. Like just places that we would never even think to go, and that is one of them. It's yeah. just like this string of volcanoes, just like poking up out of the earth. Yeah. You, know you ever been to Truro, <laughs> dude? The hub of Nova Scotia. That's its slogan. Um, did you guys see the TikTok video that was going around? It was like, would you believe a place like this exists so close to here? And it's like zooming in on Google Maps, and it zooms into Truro, and then it cuts yeah. to like, no. like uh, sports, but that. It, no. it cuts to like it cuts to like the Italian like, coast yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. and like, yeah, like oh really? Like, just fucking with you? It's, it's, <laughs> it's really funny. Um, um, you know, Travis Rice. Uh, Jesus Christ, are we ever gonna fucking wrap this episode no, up? That's right. right. Yeah, he makes amazing. Uh, like, just wants to go and snowboard everywhere, basically. But made a really great movie uh, about going to this place off that. It was uh, in the Art of Flight, was it not? No, it was a new one. It's the fourth fourth um movie that he made but he goes to like Ar- archipelago that comes out from alaska mm-hmm. that's like up into that area mm-hmm. and there's some crazy mountains up there also really big in in the birding scene ah. a lot of like uh, crazy remote birds up there wow you know i learned a lot about birding when i went to antarctica because cool. there was a massive birding group on the boat and a lot of people go there because like that's there's great. a lot of birds that you can't see anywhere else in the world right that makes total sense. I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's end our podcast. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I uh, hope you enjoyed that, folks. And uh, uh, just, you know, 
rating or review. Uh, tell someone say Sick Boy is awesome. And uh, <laughs> that was lazy, man. Why don't you take it again from the top? Okay, you're gonna rate, review, and subscribe. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna follow <laughs> all the social medias, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the Twitters, and all that stuff. Um, um, CBC is only 69 percent funded by. Um, the government, uh, according crazy. to Elon Musk, <laughs> and uh, uh, CBC is our daddy. Um, uh, uh, all right, so uh, Apple Podcasts, leave a rating <laughs> review, Spotify in the mobile app, the uh, star, and hey, they want to support the Discord channel. Whoa! <laughs> and if you want to be a guest on the podcast, go to sickboypodcast.com, click that button, fill out the form, be a guest on the show. Sometimes I really think we're only doing this for us, which is. Great. Hey, it's, you know, it's kind of what makes it beautiful. Hey, man, what's right? it called? Uh, what's the trend? Self, self-love, self self-love, self-care, self-therapy, self-care. Self-care. Radical care. acceptance. Self-care, radical acceptance. That's right. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much to everybody who's tuning in, who's still here with us right now. If you're here with us, it means so much to me. I really so sink much. a lot of my time and energy into making this so beautiful and meaningful for, for you. And, and if you're out there still listening, I just want you to know that you mean a lot. Oh, soft and pink with purple head. Gently you lay with me on my bed. Get on with it, George R.R. R. Martin. Oh, wow, wow, calls the wiener oh. from on high. A little tiny wiener. Still. <laughs> thank you to uh, Jeff Lomas. Um, <laughs> and thank you to Richard Coyne oh for the theme music. Not that music, but some music. That is it for this week. I'm Brian. I'm Taylor. And I'm Jeremy. And this is Sick Boy. Oh, snap, yeah!